Hey everyone, uh, welcome back to Sutra Coder. Uh, this is Ravina, and today we are going to look at problem 818, which is race car. This is uh, the most frequently asked uh, Google question in 22. Uh, now let's start by reading the problem. The problem says your car uh, starts at position 0 and speed plus 1 on an infinite number line. You can your car can go into negative positions. Your car drives automatically uh, according to the sequence of instructions where A is accelerate and R is reverse. When you get an instruction A, your car does the following. Position becomes position plus speed. Speed becomes speed into 2. When you get an instruction R, your car does the following. If your speed is positive, then speed becomes negative, negative 1. Otherwise, the speed becomes positive 1 and your position stays the same. Given a target po uh, position target, return the length of the shortest sequence of instructions to get there. So let's start by understanding the problem here. Uh, let me open my notepad. Okay, let's uh, try to understand. Uh, let's take the example number 2 where we have... Uh, target as 6. Uh, now uh, let's take into account the variables here. We have a position variable where position is uh, always starting at 0. So we'll take 0 and our speed is plus 1 to start with. So my s would be 1. Uh, let's talk about the number line here. So we are at the starting position let's say uh, let's uh, create a tuple we have moves we have position and then we have speed to start with we are at position zero we have made zero moves we are at position zero and to start with my uh, speed is one now uh, we want to reach our target six we are at position zero we need to reach position six for that we want to accelerate right we have two commands accelerate and reverse we need to we should accelerate so that our position is incremented by speed and we move forward so suppose uh, so i'm going to give an acceleration command once i give the acceleration command my uh, position here becomes position is equal, uh, is equal to position plus speed so my position becomes 0 plus 1, which is 1, and my speed becomes speed into 2, which is 2. So here I have made one move, my position is 1, and my speed is 2 after one acceleration. I am now at position 1. I need to reach 6. So yes, I need to give another acceleration command. I give another acceleration command. Uh, right now, what happens is, my position, position again becomes position plus speed. So position becomes 3 and my speed is doubled. So my speed becomes 2 into 2, which is 4. With two moves, I get to position 3 and my speed is 4. This is after another acceleration command. Uh, I'm still at position 3. I need to reach 6. So I'm going to issue another acceleration. With another acceleration, my position becomes position plus speed, which is 7, and my speed becomes 4 into 2, which is 8. Now, with 3 moves, I am at position 7 and speed 8. Now, if you look at it, we wanted to reach target 6, but right now we are at 7. That means that we need to go back. Our 6 was somewhere here, right? Now, this is 7. Uh, we need to go back. For that, uh, we need to issue a reverse command. When we, see, uh, when we issue a reverse command, we issue a reverse command, what happens when we receive we, our speed, if it's positive, becomes minus 1. Otherwise, the speed becomes 1 and your position stays the same. So I issued a reverse command here. My position, well, my moves becomes 4 because I... Uh, issued one more command my position stays the same but my speed sp if speed is greater positive then it be becomes minus one if otherwise it becomes one 
my speed is positive it's 8 so it becomes minus 1 so here this is my uh, <clears throat> current condition okay I'm at this place which is the same position but with different speed and moves once I receive this reverse command I know that right now I'm pointing in the left direction because my speed is minus one every time I uh, change my position my position will be position plus speed which is going to go to the left hand side which is going to decrement my speed and that's what we want right now so here we need to issue another acceleration command so that we can go backwards when I do that when I uh, issue an acceleration command my position becomes position plus speed so my position becomes 7 plus minus 1 which is 7 minus 1 which is 6 and my speed becomes minus 2 speed into 2 so here at this point my moves are 5 my position is 6 and my speed is minus 2 do you see this we, we reached position 6 which is our target and how many moves did it take for us to get here it took us 5 moves uh, do you understand what the problem is now uh, let's see how we can solve this so on basis of this explanation do you see a similarity between uh, uh, do you see resemblance of an algorithm uh, if you look at the problem here it says find the shortest sequence of uh, find the shortest length um, and it actually looks like a graph to me so suppose you have you are, we are driving a position graph now let's say this is position one two three four five six you know seven and if you look at it we go from uh, it's zero we go from zero to one one to three you know three to seven seven to six uh and somewhere suppose there, there are connections here so this actually is a graph if you look at it we start from a particular source and we want to reach a target and do you know an algorithm that can help us with that uh, that would be breadth first search so we can solve this problem really using breadth first search I know that uh, this problem is categorized into uh, DP, which is dynamic programming. But I think that during interviews, you know, if you see a problem, this is what comes to you intuitively. I mean, this is the intuition behind it. You should be able to solve it. With dynamic programming, uh, what I have personally experienced is that uh, I'm not able to solve any dynamic programming problem that I have not looked at previously and this type of solution is intuitive it helps us you know it shows us how good we are with algorithms are we able to solve a problem so I'm going to solve this using breadth first search okay so uh, let's start by writing some code I hope this uh, explanation was helpful okay so I'm going to start with a queue since we are doing a breadth first search I need to have a queue in place. So I'm going to create a queue for myself. Queue will be collections.dq. And then I'm going to add my, in my queue, I'm going to add a tuple of uh, my uh, <clears throat> moves, position, and speed, similar to what we did. Okay. So I'm going to do uh, moves. My moves are zero to start with. My position is zero, but my speed is one. So that's what I did. The next thing I want to do is suppose I go through a node again and again. So let me uh, tell you what that means. So suppose if I'm traversing through this graph and uh, I'm here, I go here, uh, here, here, here. And suppose I again reach a node that is already visited. So I need, in that instance, I want to keep track of which node did I visit? Which distance did I calculate? So for that, I'm going to keep a visited set. So I will do a visited set. Uh, now I want to go through my queue. So while my queue is not empty, I will uh, pop up the uh, top element from the queue. 
so uh, sorry uh, the leftmost element from the queue so my queue dot pop left uh, that would be that would be my moves my position and then the speed okay um, the next thing that we do here is once we pop the element first we want to check if we have reached the position and the position is at the target so we check if my position is equal to the target at that point we just return the moves because we have been storing moves position and speed into our queue then we can just retrieve it, retrieve it and pass it along if it doesn't match match the target the next thing that we want to do is we want to check if it's already visited if it's visited then we just want to skip it and move on to the next element so so let's check if position if position uh, comma speed is in our visited set okay visited set if that's true then i want to just continue okay if it's not in the visited set the first thing i want to do is add it so i will add my Oh my god, I'm doing so bad with my spell spellings today. Visited dot add. Uh, I'm gonna add my position horrible position and my speed. Okay. The next thing that I want to do is I want to uh, add my moves. Uh, my position plus speed and my speed the current speed to the queue so i will do q dot append my moves my moves would be then moves plus one because we want to increment it with every take my position will change to position plus speed since that what uh, we do with acceleration command and then my speed becomes speed into two okay now comes the tricky part how do we issue a reverse command uh, how do we check if you know we are going in the right direction we need to reverse or we are going in the reverse direction we need to go to the right um, there are really two conditions to do that let me get back to my notepad here real quick okay uh, suppose you are on this number line okay the first condition would be that you are at your target uh, no this is the target six okay and you are way above the target you are somewhere here where your uh, position plus speed is right here and your speed is going in the right direction towards the right on the number line that's when you know that you are way past your target and then you have to go back that's what's happened that's what happened here in this scenario that we were at seven we wanted to go to six and our speed was still positive that's when we were like oh yeah i want to go reverse now to, in order to reach my target so that is our condition one the second condition would be your target is six you have your position somewhere here you have position plus speed somewhere below your target and your speed is going to the left your speed is negative that's when you know that oh my target is on the right i'm going to the left i'm moving further and further farther away from my target so i need to change my direction i need to make it uh, positive my, my speed positive so these are the two conditions that we have to take into account when we change the speed or take uh, or get a reverse command so let's do that uh, the first condition was uh, if I'm way above the target and my speed is positive. So that would be my position. My position plus speed is greater than target and my speed is greater than zero. That means I'm moving towards right, I'm moving in the forward direction uh, and I'm way above the target. Or the second condition would be my position plus speed 
is a less than target and my uh, speed is also less than zero so my speed is negative speed is less than zero a little typo here let me correct that okay so if that is true then we want to issue a reverse command and uh, what happens when we receive a, uh, when we issue a reverse command my if my speed is positive it becomes negative otherwise the speed becomes uh, sorry if my speed is positive then it becomes minus one otherwise it becomes one so let's do that my speed is minus one if my uh, speed is greater than zero else it becomes one in the end i want to add that to my queue so after changing the direction i'm gonna add that so q dot append my moves plus one when i issue reverse command my position stays the same so my position is the same and then i already calculated my speed so this is my speed okay so that's really all the uh, lines that you need in your program so let me try and run it to make sure that i did not make any spelling mistakes that i was making very frequently during this video okay it runs so let me try uh, let me submit it okay it's submitted faster than 42 percent it's trust me guys this is uh, a intuitive solution and very easy to understand and would be worth going through before you go if you have any google interviews coming up so now let's talk about uh, the time and space complexity uh, it's a bit uh, tricky uh, if you have worked with binary trees, uh, I think you would have an idea of how to calculate uh, time complexities was something that is uh, growing exponentially. So in our case, our speed right here is incrementing by, uh, I mean, incrementing two times, right? So in this case, our uh, time complexity would be really log of uh, n, where n is the target. So let me uh, try and tell you what it is. So here, our speed was suppose, was 1. It becomes 2, 4, 8. You see, it's, it's growing exponentially. It's, uh, it's multiplying by 2 every time. So in that case, my uh, time complexity, instead of going through all the nodes, so suppose I have like, this graph and instead of going through every node uh, in order to calculate bfs breadth for search it's going to skip some levels it's going to skip some nodes and th those nodes are going to be you know two times it's going growing into two times so that's going to skip it so basically it's like a binary tree uh, kind of scenario so my time complexity here would be o of log of n where n is really the target. So we can just say log of t, really. And the space complexity, the space complexity would also be log of n. That's because we are going to save, uh, you know, whichever uh, nodes that we explore, we are going to save them into our queue. And we are not going to explore all the nodes. It's going to be really log of n because we are uh, growing, the speed is getting multiplied into two. So our space complexity is also going to be log of t. Okay, I hope this uh, is helpful and this was the, this video was clear and you are able to solve this problem. Uh, please like the video and comment on it if you like this video. It really helps me out. And then please subscribe if you want to be notified about new videos coming up. This score will be on my GitHub and I will include a link in the description. Also, I am on Discord channel. So if you have uh, any questions, then you can connect with me on Discord. I'll include that link as well in the description below. And I will see you next time in my next video. Happy coding.